There is a much better land promised to Israel. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. Much is made by dispensationalists of this eternal land promised to Abraham's physical descendants. They assert, after all, that God made a promise, it hasn't yet come to pass, and God doesn't lie, so the promise of Palestine to ethnic Israel will take place in the future millennium. Such is the extent of the dispensational logic. It is the unwavering position of dispensationalism that the land promises to be fulfilled in the future to one generation of literal Israelites who survive the tribulation period and enter that millennium. In addition, this millennium is biblically found nowhere other than in Revelation 20, verses 1 through 6 which raises serious doubts about inserting a prefabricated framework into the balance of the prophetic word of God. The millennium may well be the log in the premillennialist side that prevents clear prophetic vision. Casting aside the 1,000-year piece of lumber sheds great gospel light on many of the Old Testament prophetic texts. Now. How can this unfailing promise of God be transformed to mean only one Israelite generation, and that for only a thousand years? All Israel for all time is by an interpretive shell game magically exchanged and now means only one generation of Jews for one thousand years. Unfortunately, such prophetic sleight of hand is commonly accepted with minimal querying by those committed to Zionistic principles. Moreover, dispensationalism's inconsistent literalism is seen with respect to the various and sundry eternal promises to Abraham and his descendants, which are routinely ignored in their forever application. The word forever comes from the Hebrew word alam, Strong's Hebrew 5769 for long duration, antiquity, futurity, forever, ever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, ancient, world, ancient time, long time, of past, or of future, always continuous existence, indefinite or unending future, eternity. In Psalms 89, 37, the Lord says about his continuous existence covenant with David, that it shall be established forever like the moon. The Aaronic priesthood is said to be a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. Exodus 40, 15. What, then, of the Melchizedek priesthood of Jesus Christ that supersedes Aaron's? Hadn't the perpetual Aaronic priesthood come to a close at the foot of the cross? Again, as forwarded by the author of Hebrews. Indeed. The descendants of Aaron had suffered much earlier setbacks prior to the first century AD. True, the Maccabees were successful in overthrowing Seleucid rule 167 to 165 BC, but they and their non-Aaronic descendants raced for the high priesthood in subsequent years even enlisting pagan rulers to assist their contending claims for the fancy hat and priestly garments. After the Maccabean Revolt, the Syrians and later the Romans became the prime factors in determining who was installed as high priest, even if those appointed had no ironic pedigree and thus no biblical right to be so elevated. 
and did not Jesus' high priesthood supersede that of Aaron? What is the temple now? Is not the temple of God now the church of Christ, superseding the structure in Jerusalem? King David said, The Lord God of Israel has given rest to his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. Has Israel actually dwelt in Jerusalem throughout its entire history? Not long after David's words were uttered came the Babylonian exile, decreed by the Almighty himself. Did God therefore fail to fulfill his forever promise concerning the Jewish occupation of Jerusalem? And what about the many centuries after the Jewish War, 66-73 AD, and the Bar Kokhba Revolt, 132-135 AD, when the Messiah-rejecting nation of Israel was booted from its capital for over 1,800 years? The forever uttered by David was obviously limited in scope. Likewise, the tabernacle lampstand was to be tended by the sons of Aaron from evening until morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever to their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. Exodus 27, 21 What has become of this forever lampstand promise, especially once the temple was raised? first by the Babylonians and then by the Romans, both taking place on the ninth of all. But what if the land promise has already been fulfilled by God in the distant past? As the book of Joshua informs us, So the Lord gave Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and lived in it. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, according to all that he had sworn to their fathers, and no one of all their enemies stood before them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hand. Not one of the good promises which the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. All came to pass. Is that true? Joshua himself later testifies. Now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you, not one of them has failed. So as not to miss the land, Mark, the writer of Kings informs us. Now Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the river to the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. This sounds an awful lot like the land promised to Abraham, wherein God said, to your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Solomon later declares, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses his servant, with such obvious claims, there are some who appear to prefer a resurrected first century Zionism over the Word of God. A rebuilt temple complete with bloody sacrifices, a Messiah ruling from the Jerusalem Davidic throne. Palestine fully populated by Jews who reign over the world. And all the Mosaic Code in full force, this is just a resurrected pharisaical first century AD hope, dispelled fully by the New Testament. 
The land promise was implemented with obedience strings attached and occupying the promised land was not unconditional after all. The Apostle Paul quotes this very passage in Galatians 3.16 now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, as referring to many, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is, Christ. So Jesus Christ and those who belong to him are the ultimate heirs of this promise. The author of Hebrews says that the Lord actually promised those of faith a better land, a heavenly one, as sought by their father Abraham. Hebrews 11:10 and 13 through 16. Isn't a heavenly Sabbath rest a much better land promised to Israel than a semi-arid piece of Middle Eastern real estate? surrounded by a host of angry and heavily armed Islamic enemies? Amen.